All right, in the previous video, we talked about recurrent neural networks with attention. So this attention mechanism helps the recurrent neural networks to deal better with long sequences. Now we are doing something crazy and remove the recurrent neural network part. So we are going to take a look at a model that just uses attention without the RNN part. So this particular type of attention we are going to look at is also called self-attention and this is the foundation behind or one of the main principles behind the so-called transformer networks that we are yeah, also taking a look at. So these transformer models are currently state-of-the-art models for long sequence modeling and uh, working with text data. So since there are lots of small topics to introduce Instead of making one very long video, I decided to split this up further into subsections. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the broad concept and then introduce a very basic form of self-attention just for educational purposes to understand the underlying principle behind self-attention. And then we are going to take a look at the more sophisticated form that is found in this original or in the original transformer model. And this original transform model also has a concept called multi-head attention. And after we cover these, we will then take a look at how these are these concepts are combined into the transformer model. And I will also introduce um, yeah some interesting insights about that, and also talk about some popular nowadays popular flavors of that. And finally, we will end with the uh, implementation of transform models in PyTorch. Okay, so this is here just a recap of what we covered in the previous video. So we had this RNN with the attention mechanism and how this worked was that we had for each generated word, so we had this um, RNN here, we call this RNN number one and we have this bidirectional RNN number two. So for each time step, the RNN here was creating an output word. And in addition to just receiving the previous hidden state, it was also receiving this context vector, which was depending on the whole sequence input here. So we had the whole sequence here, so the hidden representations here. And then we multiplied them by these attention weights here. So the attention weights were a normalized version of values computed by a neural network. So this was what we covered in the previous video. So the key idea was that yeah, we had the whole sequence in a weighted form as input. Now we are going to remove all sequential parts from that model. So we're getting rid of all the sequential parts. We don't use any recurrence no convolution, nothing like that, nothing that really is specific for processing input sequentially. And we are going to work towards this so-called transformer model, which only relies on the self-attention mechanism. And the self-attention mechanism processes the whole sequence all at once. And this is actually also great for parallelization. Actually, transform models are pretty expensive to train, but um, they are better at utilizing uh, multiple GPUs because you can train them in parallel. With a RNN you generate one thing at a time, right? And so you can't run these in parallel because you have to, for this, or to compute this, you have to have finished this part. So transformers are a little bit better or a lot better at parallelizing computations. And similar to the RNN, the many-to-many -many one, we will also have an encoder and a decoder part. But instead of yeah, using RNNs or LSTMs, we use something called stacked attention layers. So this is what we are working towards too. This is the big picture, like getting to these parts. And we are going to do this um, one step at a time. The basic foundation for these slides is this paper. It's called Attention is All You Need. And this was yeah the foundational groundbreaking paper in 2017 that introduced the original transformer architecture, which outperformed any other method out there up to this point. So, and since then, since uh, 2018, the field of natural language processing with transformers has grown tremendously. So you can see it starts 
also relatively small. So here on the y-axis, this is uh, the number of parameters in, in millions, I think. Yeah, I, it's always unfortunate when people don't label the y-axis, but I think what they meant here in this article was uh, parameters in millions. So then this one would be 8.3 billion parameters. So you can see there's a huge growth curve in terms of the sizes of these models, but also a huge growth in popularity. So I don't have... Um, it here in this video, but there are also papers like uh, review papers that show the number of citations, how often transformers are cited and how many models are out there. And it's also an exponential growth. So it's a very, very popular field. But of course, this is something that is not feasible for a normal human being to train 8.3 billion parameters. There are nowadays also models or research groups focusing on developing small transformer models. In any case, this is just like big picture showing that transformer models are interesting. There are many different flavors. We are talking about this foundational one. Attention is all you need. And if you're interested, you can follow up with yeah, some other models. Later, I will also briefly talk about GPT-2 and um, the, the BERT model, which are also kind of foundational models, um, the main concept behind that, because they are, they are using um, self-supervised learning techniques that have been also then adopted in other types of transformers. Okay, coming back to the self-attention mechanism. So before I talk about the self-attention mechanism that is used in the transformers, I wanted to cover a very basic form of that just to yeah, introduce the topic slowly. So this very basic form, we can think of it as a procedure consisting of three steps. So the first step is deriving the attention weights, which are a form of similarity or compatibility between a current input so current input in the sequence, one sequence element, you can think of it as a word in the sentence, and all other inputs. So the similarity between a given word and all the other words in the sentence. So once we, I will show you how we derive the weights in the next slide. So once we have the weights, we normalize them via the softmax function. This is similar to what we have done in the RNN, by the way, when we computed the normalized attention weights. And then we will, in step four here, compute the attention value from the normalized weights and the corresponding inputs. So this whole thing looks very similar to what I've shown you before with the RNN, so the RNN attention mechanism. So also here we have as the attention value here, we have a weighted sum here. So this here, xj, is an input a word and we assume we have t words in our sentence and so for each word we have a tension weight so let's call this word j to uh, jt so we have t words in our sentence and then no I, it's a little bit unfortunate because i was hiding this okay so word j and this one here, you can see this is ij. So the i is for the ith word. So this is an attention weight for the relationship between the ith word and word j. And you use that to compute this attention value for the ith input, for the ith word in the sentence. So it's maybe a little bit dense here in terms of information. So let's look at this um, step by step. And I will also show you how these attention weights, these A's here are computed. So here at the top, I have again what I've showed you on the previous slide where we compute the output corresponding to the ith input to the ith word. So if I, every time I write input here, ith input, I mean, for instance, a sentence and the ith input would be the ith word. And how do we now compute these attention weights? So in this simple, very basic form of self-attention, just for introductory purposes, let's assume we compute this as the dot product between here 
the ith input word and word j. So let's say word i and word j. And then we repeat that for all the inputs in the sentence, for all the words, the t words. So we get e i 1, e i 2, e i 3, up to e i t. And then we compute the normalized form using the softmax function. So then all these, the normalized ones, will sum up to 1. And these will be then our attention weights. Yeah, so to summarize the previous slides, here's a visual representation of what we have just talked about. So assume we have this input sequence here. So here the input sequence, you can think of it as a sentence. And each x here, each vector, represents a word. So I said vector because this is an embedding, so an embedding of the word. And yeah, we have talked about this in the context of RNNs, where we, for instance, convert the word into an integer index, and then we retrieve the embedding from an embedding matrix. So the embedding is essentially just a continuous valued vector for each particular word. And then we compute in step one the similarity with the uh, Let's call that the query, the current input. Let's call that query. And here, for instance, I could be one. So the first first word here, for instance. So we would do that with every word. But we would start, let's say, with the first word, then walk through step one, step two, step three. And then we would move on to the second word and do the same thing with step one, step, step two, and step three. So here. The output is ai equals 1 for the first step, and then for the second step it's um, 2. And then we would stack them all up, so we would get essentially um, a matrix here. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So explaining one thing at a time. So we use this, or we can use a dot product to compute the similarity. Why a dot product? Well, that's just one way we we can compute this uh, compatibility or similarity between two vectors. We could also consider other uh, functions like cosine similarity. It's essentially just a normalized dot product. But let's say, keep things simple, it's, we use a dot product. So we compute the dot product here between the query xi and each other word in the sentence, right? So you notice it's x1 here, x2. So for each one, we compute this similarity which is a scalar right so each each thing here is a scalar single number and then we put that through the softmax function so that they are normalized so we have now our normalized attention scores here which are then values between 0 and 1 and they sum up to 1 oh sorry that should be t here okay um from I equals 1 to t. Um, anyways, so and then we sum them up here. So we have the attention values, which is a vector, right? Because x, um, xj is a vector. So xj are our inputs uh, words. So we are going here from xj to xt. So the, we are going over all the inputs here. So we are now weighting the inputs with this corresponding a. So what we're doing is we weight this input and then we add it to this weighted input and add it to this weighted input and add it to this weighted input. And then this gives us a vector, right, because we are adding them. And this vector is essentially just like a word embedding, except that it contains now information about the whole sequence. So this original word embedding here only contains information about the word itself. So no matter where the word is in the sentence and no matter what the sentence looks like, to start with the, the word, let's say the word hello, would always have the same embedding when we put it into the model. That's also in the RNN when we have the embedding, it would always have the same value, no matter where it is in the sentence, if it's the first word, the second word, the last word, and no matter what the other words are. But now, in contrast here, our um, 
our output here, if we have the query as word one, it is also a representation of this word, let's say hello, except it contains information about hello in the context of all the other words, right? Because we have this this waiting step here going on. So we have now a more powerful, a context-aware embedding vector. So what we did is essentially in terms of yeah, extracting information, instead of just considering each word individually, we, are, we now have representations of words aware of its context. So this is like what I call a very simple, basic form of self-attention. This is of course not what is used in the transformer, but it's just to introduce the topic. So, and then in the next video, we will look at the more sophisticated version. But I think, yeah, this one kind of summarizes the whole concept. I mean, not the whole concept, but one of the main ideas behind attention, like deriving the context. All right, so in the next video, let's take a look at the more sophisticated version then.